Okay, here's, here's a somewhat more challenging problem uh, involving Rolle's theorem. We want to prove that this cubic function has exactly one real root, okay? Um, so it has at least one, but it doesn't have more than one, right? It has exactly one. And one of the strategies that you can use for a problem like this is, is to actually do two separate things. First, we're going to prove that at least one real root exists, right? So there is at least one. But then we're going to show that it has at most one, right? So it can't have two or more, right? So why do we know it has at least one? So first step, since uh, f is continuous, so it's continuous for all real numbers because it's a polynomial. And we know that f of 0 equals minus 1 is less than 0. f of 1 equals 1 is bigger than 0. What can we do with that? Well, this is intermediate value theorem, right? Intermediate value theorem says that if you've got a continuous function that switches from positive, from negative to positive, um, then somewhere between those two points, it has to have a root. So we know that f of c equals 0 for some c between 0 and 1. OK, so we know there's a root between 0 and 1. How do we know there isn't another root out there somewhere else? Suppose um, there is also some, well, let's call it um, D in R with f of d equals 0, OK? Um, well, then we know that uh, f is continuous on the interval from c to d. It's differentiable on the open interval from c to d. Um, here I'm assuming that d is bigger than c, but you could switch them around, right? d might also be smaller than c, but you'll, we'll give the same argument there. Um, so we know it's continuous, it's differentiable, right? Because it's polynomial. And we know that f of c equals f of d. OK. So Rolle's theorem then should guarantee that they're somewhere between these two values, right? There's a point where the derivative is 0. But what's f prime of x? f prime of x is 3x squared plus 1, right? And a square is never negative. We're adding 1. And this is positive for all x in r, right? Um, so therefore, uh, well, no such D exists, or we'd be contradicting Rolle's theorem, right? Um, we'd have a contradiction, because Rolle's theorem says there has to be a place where the derivative is 0 if you have two roots. But we know that there's no place where the derivative can be 0 because it's always positive, right? And so how do we get ourselves out of this uh, contradiction that we got ourselves into? Well, we say, well, we ran into a contradiction by assuming that there was a second root, right? And, and what we realize is that we can't. We can't have that second root because then we'd have this contradiction with Rolle's theorem. And that means that this root that we found up here between 0 and 1, it must be the only one. There can't be another one, um, or else Rolle's theorem would be violated. So putting the two together, 
we know there's exactly one real root, and it's this one that's somewhere between 0 and 1.